one of the first setup tasks for Horizon Cloud Next Gen is to find an Active Directory domain to Horizon Cloud Service so that machine objects can be created in Active Directory. These machine accounts are for virtual desktops and app servers of published apps. In this video, we'll go through the process. Horizon Cloud Next Gen is flexible. The Active Directory domain might, for example, be an Azure Active Directory, soon to be renamed Entra ID, or it might be an AD server in a private data center that is connected to a cloud platform, such as Microsoft Azure. That's the option we'll be using here. For specific Active Directory requirements, see the product documentation topic called Requirements Checklist for Deploying a Microsoft Azure Edge. The AD I'm going to use is on-premises, but it's hooked up to the VNet I plan to use in Azure. So if I go into the Azure portal, look up the VNet I plan to use, scroll down and select DNS servers, you see that I have a couple of custom servers listed here. These are the internal IP addresses of the on-premises domain controllers that provide DNS services. If I hadn't added them yet, I would come to this page to add them. Now, the other prerequisite is that you must have a couple of Active Directory user accounts that have enough permissions to bind Horizon Cloud to the domain and a couple of user accounts that have enough permissions to join computers to the domain. Here, we're in my on-premises Active Directory users and groups. First, I'll show you the domain bind user, which I've named dbind and the auxiliary domain bind user, which I've named auxbind. Because I'm doing this in a test environment, I decided to make things easy for myself and just make them members of the domain admins group. If you don't want to give those users that many permissions, see the Active Directory section of that product documentation topic I mentioned earlier, which is linked in the YouTube card. You also want to make the accounts so that the password never expires and deselect the checkbox that would require the user to change the password at next logon. The other accounts you need to have are the domain join user account, which I'm calling djoin, and the auxiliary domain join account here called auxjoin. Likewise, I've made these members of the domain admins, but if you, you need to lock down permissions, see that same documentation topic I mentioned earlier. Now that I've gotten these prerequisites out of the way, I can log into cloud services, launch the Workspace ONE service, and manage the Horizon Cloud service. Now, there are two ways to get to this domain registration. The quickest is to click select on the Horizon Cloud service tile, and then it's the first task you see. It lists the prerequisites here that we discussed earlier. Click register domain to start the wizard. Another way to get to the wizard is to click integrations in the navigation pane. Click manage on the identity and access tile, and then on the domains tab, click add. For name, enter the domain name without the .com. For DNS domain name, enter the name with the .com. For default OU, I'm okay with using the computer's OU, but if you don't want to do that, you can select a different OU or go create one in Active Directory and then come back and select it here. This OU is where Horizon Cloud will put all the computer accounts that later get automatically created for virtual desktops and RDSH app servers. Click Next. Here's where you enter the domain bind and auxiliary bind user account names and passwords. Click next. Here's where you enter the domain join and auxiliary join user account names and passwords. Click save and domain registration is complete. In the next video, we'll work on our next task, which is identity and access for end users. For more Horizon Cloud technical resources, be sure to visit techzone.com.